Hi everyone, happy Thursday. You guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook page um, with Brushed by Brandy. My name is Brandy. Um, I am a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador and I paint with you guys live every Thursday evening. Um, and tonight we're gonna be working on kind of a different technique. I've got my husband, Sean, here to help answer any questions. Um, we're fresh off a week off. Uh, we didn't do a live last Thursday because I just came back from traveling to Atlanta where I taught um, a whole bunch of you guys at the Bells and Bow Tour, which was an amazing, amazing time. I'm still recovering from it. Amazing time. If you guys ever have the chance to go to an in-person event, um, like one of these conferences, they are absolutely, there are no words for them. I come back just um, totally refreshed for what I get to do for my job. So thank you to everybody who came out to join me. Um, but let's go ahead and paint here on camera tonight. So you guys come on and tell me where you're watching from. And um, let's talk about this desk that I've got behind me. I'm watching from my garage. Oh, okay. So Sean Colborn, welcome. <laughs> thank you for tuning in tonight. <laughs> Sean's only semi-tuned in, by the way. He's had a long day at work, long week at work. Um, so this is a little Bassett desk that I have here. And let me show you where I'm pulling my color inspiration from this from. Um, for this. From. This is the new Lush Floral Transfer by Redesign with Prima. And I'm super inspired by some of the colors in this transfer. Like this bright red color here. There's a lot of really pretty plums different shades of purple. I'm not a huge purple fan, but I do like it when I can do it in different shades because sometimes just an undertone in a color makes all the difference in the world. So I like that this is a little bit more of a red purple, whereas this is a little bit more blue. So I'm going to pull in some of the reds in my purples tonight. Um, but I like it against the green. And um, this is a beautiful, this piece here is beautiful. It's a large two-piece rose, and this is tea rose 100%. The color in this is tea rose. So I'm super inspired by the purples in this floral here. I'm going to use this transfer on this desk. Now let's talk about this desk. Um, this is by Bassett. It's a little French provincial desk, but what I like to do with a lot of desks is I'm going to take and add a mirror to this and make it a vanity. Um, it's got a very feminine shape to it, so I feel like it's meant to be a vanity already, and it'll just have great storage in it. I have a huge collection of mirrors from other pieces, so the mirror I'm going to add to this is a swivel mirror that um, makes total sense with a vanity piece. So I started on this side over here, and that's because I'm hoping by the end of this live, it's still wet right now, um, I can come over here and we can put our second coat on here, which is going to be a blended coat. But this color right here... I mixed my own custom color. It's going to dry a little bit darker than what it is here on the piece right now, but the colors that I mixed to get that are um, Dixie Belle Muscadine Wine. Muscadine Wine? I don't know. You guys, I don't know. I give up. I'm just going to say Muscadine because that's what rolls off. I've heard it in songs either way too. So Okay, uh, yeah. so then I can't be wrong, right? Um, I like to say Muscadine because I also mixed it with Aubergine, and they just sound good together. Muscadine Wine and Aubergine, Muscadine, Aubergine. So I mix muscadine wine, aubergine, um, and then to get a little bit lighter tone in it, I um, also added some tea rose. And I mixed two colors here. So the lighter version, this is the muscadine and aubergine, and this just has a little bit of tea rose in it. So those are my two colors. So we're going to go ahead and lay a base coat on this piece. Um, so far, I've cleaned this with Dixie Belle White Lightning, um, and then I ran a coat of water over it. I did strip the top down to the bare wood. It's just at bare wood right now. And it actually needs to be sanded a little bit better. But I always strip my tops first because there is nothing worse than accidentally dripping stripper on a freshly painted piece. Totally agree. So I will always choose to strip my tops first. If I have to come back and sand, that's no big deal. I might get some dust, but I can clean dust off. Um, but I don't want to drip chemical stripper onto my furniture piece. So right there, I just laid a coat of my paint color on and it, I got really good one coat coverage. I'm gonna put two coats on this. I did not put Dixie Belle Boss on this. I feel like this piece, this is maple. This desk is maple. And I don't think it's a bleeder. So I did not coat this one in Dixie Belle Boss. I'm just, it's just cleaned and I'm able to put the paint right onto the piece. 
So I'm going to pull this drawer out. <laughs> Everybody's asking about me and the kids last week. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, yes, they were angels. Yeah, Don't I wish. Totally angels. No, you know what was hard for me, you guys, is my little guy, like, he couldn't talk on the phone with me without crying. That was hard. Um, but Sean treats them when I'm gone. You know what they did? Well, I'll let you tell them, like, what kind of stuff you guys go do. Oh, we just have beer and pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the beer is for dad. The pizza is for the kids. They go to pizza. They got Taco Bell for dinner. They got, I mean, all the stuff I would Slurpees. never want to Slurpees. They go, uh, they watch movies that I would never want to watch, like all the um, Marvel movies that I, I, like, I got lost in Marvel movies, I don't know, eight movies ago. I don't know what's even going on in them anymore. So, um... So, I know they miss me, but I don't know if they really noticed that I'm even gone. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good to know you're needed, right? So, I'm going to push this over here a little bit Thank so you guys can see me. Right now, I'm just putting a base coat on, but there's a lot of um, finesse that goes into putting a base coat on. What did I do with my screwdriver? I want to take this drawer out. So we are going to mix in some multiple colors to this. The reason I'm laying this as my base is because because I mixed in multiple colors to this, um, I can then come behind and the colors I mixed in, I can add those on top and they'll all coordinate with this color because they're, you know, they're mixed in here. So I'm going to mix over the top muscadine wine, aubergine, and tea rose. Look, I'm just gonna say blend into your surroundings because you're probably gonna get choked out. You got it's muscadine. Yeah, you're, I'm gonna get choked yeah. out. <laughs> it gets pretty I'm violent. Do, I'm not doing it. I know. I know people are very adamant about this topic, but I'm not doing it. I feel good. So we here in California yeah, obviously like to do things California. backwards. Okay, so a few things. When I'm laying on a base coat, number one, I, I love to lay on my paint with my Dixie Belle Mini. That's, this is my favorite brush for just laying on a really nice, clean base coat. I'm not using any water for this coat. Um, the reason I usually will use a water over when I'm blending is because the paint gets dressed to a chalky matte finish, and it can drag a little bit over another layer of paint. But this is my first coat. So I don't even need water. I make sure my brush strokes are all going in the same direction. Um, Dixie Bell is a self-leveling paint. So if I give it a reasonably good start, most of my brush strokes are going to level out for me. This is also a solid base color. So you'll notice I'm pulling out all my drawers and stuff. When I'm blending over the front, you guys see me paint a lot with my drawers in. But this is a solid color. I do pull my drawers out. So I'm really digging your uh, butt scooter. And your uh, sit sit desk over here. Yeah, You're still... my desk. <laughs> I have a sit stand. You have a sit sit. Yeah. So Sean works from home, and he has one of those desks that, like, you push a button on it, and it goes, and it will raise up in our office. Although I don't think I've ever seen you use that. I've never walked in and saw. Because you're not allowed in my desk. office when I'm working. I go in there all. Very the time. important stuff happens in there. Yeah, very important. Top stuff. secret. It's like governmental stuff. See, you guys, uh, Sean didn't have any release last week because we didn't go live, so I told you he'd be fresh with a whole bunch of one-liners. I probably don't even need to be here tonight. No, 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 yeah. He could handle this one on his own. But people I, actually tune in for painting. It, I paint know. up underneath the lip of, this, of my pieces, underneath here, and then when I run my stain down the front of this top, it's going to meet up with that paint. And I'll have a nice, really clean lip. So I sure hope so. I'm gonna pull my drawers out one at a time. That's still drying over there. I may still need to hit it with a heat gun so we can go over the top of it with our second coat. And then you'll get an idea what this piece is gonna look like. Sometimes too, when I'm putting a base coat on, I will go the opposite direction that I intend to run my paint. Because then, when I come back and I brush it, so I just did a vertical brush stroke, and now I can brush it horizontally, and that gives me really good coverage. Hmm. Andy says uh, you inspire. You have a garage full of projects and experiments. Ah, uh, I do. Yeah, yeah that's you're, that's you're pretty welcome. much us. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, to everyone who now has a garage full, you're welcome. Yeah. To all the husbands who want to sell it at a yard sale, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. It's a good thing nobody has our address. I don't think those would be care packages coming our way. I used to tell I, I used to tell Sean I think there's worse habits I could have, worse things to be buying out there than like paint. Oh, believe me. Oh, and big pieces of furniture? That's uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's so that's weird. The hard thing is that my hobby involves like a large amount of storage. So thankfully, we have a separate building that I keep all my pieces in. And half of it is dedicated to my furniture, and the other half is our boat. So, um, but, but in our last house, I mean, where we moved from, I used to go live in there surrounded by, um, by furniture storage. Do you guys like my custom color? I'm pretty happy about it. Rave reviews. Yeah, I'm not a purple person, but I think I'm um, putting this little bit of red, the little bit of muscadine wine. Oh, see, that was uh -oh. for you guys. Linda says her home. husband finally gave her a bay in the garage. That's a yeah. mistake. No, that's when you know. Yeah, that's a bad one. That's when you know it's a real thing. That's a commitment right there. That's what I had before. I had a bay in our two-car garage. Sending condolences. I now have a bay in our three-car garage and half of a half of an outbuilding. When we built our house, I was going to. Um, so I'm making sure that I'm getting in. This is a this is a double drawer. It's actually one piece, but it's a double drawer. And I'm going to make sure that I get in here underneath this crevice. And some of that helps when you pull the drawers out. You can see. Make sure that you don't miss any spots. And here I'll show you again. This is I'll brush my paint on vertically, and then when I come back with a horizontal brush stroke that. Horizontal because that's the grain of my wood. My, the grain of my wood is running horizontally. So I usually will run my brush strokes in the same direction as my wood. So to uh, answer Aaron's question, yes, the storage is on site. Oh, yeah. We live on five acres. So it's actually right across from my um, house. That's a good story. Yeah. No, we're not. If I had to rent a storage building, <sighs> no, I, even I draw the line there. Yeah. But I know people do. I know people rent storage for furniture. That's just a level I'm not ready for yet. Every woman deserves a she shed. Uh, you know what was hard? I didn't want a she shed because I'm home with the kids all the time. I don't want to be out in like a shed somewhere. I want to have... But the workshop, that's what it started as. That was going to be yeah, your specific true. place. But in my defense, we got that workshop because my business was growing so fast that we had to incorporate a separate building into our home build. Oh, there's nothing bad. And it's been it. a lifesaver since then. So you can see that I've got a beautiful base coat on here. My brush strokes are nice and soft. You can even go over the very top of them with just a really soft hand, just feather those brush strokes out. With um, any product that's self-leveling, you want to avoid going back over it once it starts setting up. So my paint is still nice and wet. I can brush it. But once it starts setting up, you want to avoid going over it. You're just going to pull brush strokes into it. Gary, it's a three-car garage. And yes, all vehicles park outside. <laughs> no, well, that's right not, now, anyway. Not, yeah, only because we have a bath. We have two bathtubs on the other side of the garage right now. It has nothing to do with my furniture. So what is it you like to do or I like you like to tell me? When we finish building a house, hmm, let's go ahead and take out one of the tubs <laughs> no, that's that we not, just put in. No, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm sorry, we're going to need to pause so we can have a domestic issue here. <laughs> I take issue with everything Sean just said. Um, so we just built a house. Yes, that part is true. So far, so good. Okay, we are in agreement there, right? Um... I don't want to talk about this anymore. It's really bothering me. Uh, on our, well, it's kind of hard to explain, but on our building plans, this is some of the stuff you don't notice. There's a six inch wall in our bathrooms. That's just a filler wall behind the tubs. So it's to the side of the to tub. To the side of the tub. So we could have had a six inch longer bathtub instead of this weird six inch filler wall. Um, the reason our architect did that was to make it a standard size tub. But I hate this little six inch filler wall. And Sean hates it too, so don't just put it on me. We noticed it during the build and thought, oh, okay, well, we'll just deal with it. But then we got to the point where we're like, why? 
why just deal with it? So we are So I'm already tired of talking about this. How long do you use your brushes before you have to toss them? Okay, Dixie Bell brushes. So this is something really important. Um, I got asked a question on my YouTube Thank channel you, Lisa. when I decided to start using Dixie Bell brushes. Dixie Bell just started um, offering their brushes last year, last winter, um, was when Dixie Bell came out with their line of brushes. Before that, I used um, an inexpensive brush from the hardware store and it worked fine. But I, I'm kind of glad I did because it gave me the um, experience to know what the difference is between a less expensive hardware store brand brush and the Dixie Bell brushes. And the difference that I know is I have never thrown away a Dixie Bell brush. I threw away a ton of my cheap brushes. They don't clean as well. They do not have the lifespan. They're great. Hardware store brushes are great if you're going to be painting one or two pieces for your house. But if you, you know, want to make a hobby of this, then I would absolutely say invest in a nicer quality brush. So I have never thrown away one of my Dixie Bell brushes. The reason is because they clean amazingly well. Look at these brushes. You can tell by the handles how beat up some of them are. That's a brush I've used a lot. Some of them are a little bit newer and not as beat up, but what matters is how well the bristles clean. And these bristles clean amazingly well so I can clean them use after use. I don't worry so much about the handles. Although I've tried stripping the handles when they get really dirty. dirty. That doesn't work very good though. Um, and those are minis. So these are the Dixie Bell Mini. And I have I have a lot of them. I, I have, I've not even counted. <laughs> she, <lo> <laughs> she has two of them somewhere. She sort of lost them. <laughs> like her marbles. Sheila, they're out there in your garage with dried paint on them. Another thing stuck in my paint. Okay, so I just did the same thing here where I went over my paint and I went horizontally and now I want my brush strokes to run vertically. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna clean it up. And I've got great coverage with a really soft hand. I'm feathering out those brush strokes and then I'm gonna clean up the bottom where it all met. And that will dry beautifully except for this There we go. Little dust things in my paint. Hmm. Dana says put a gator head on your paintbrush, your handles, before you use them. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, then the paint would clean off much easier. That's true. That's a good idea. Clearly, I've not done that. but, but Clearly, my, I haven't. My point being that um, I've never thrown away one of my Dixie Bell brushes. Never. Never. Um, <laughs> Um, somewhere at risk of being thrown out at the uh, at the Bells and Bow Tour, and I would not even allow that to happen. I salvaged them because to me these are these are worth their weight in gold. Um, it's good to try other brushes so you know the difference, but I would never go back now. But somebody had asked me when I transitioned over to the Dixie Bell brushes, and the answer is when they started um, offering them, which was just last winter. So we have, it's roughly our one year anniversary of having Dixie Bell brushes. So I've got a pretty good base coat here. I do need to get underneath there, but I won't make you guys watch me do that. Throw at me the uh, name of the colors again. So the colors I mixed to um, create this, this is a custom color mix here that I'm putting on. Um, really quick, let me sidebar for a minute. Um, my paint's starting to dry here, but I noticed a spot that I missed. I added a little bit of water Instead of trying to brush over the paint after it's already started getting sticky, add a little bit of water and now I can brush over it. It basically reactivates my paint and makes it workable again. But don't try to brush over your paint once it started drying. Okay, and then my custom color mix came from um, a mix of Aubergine, Aubergine, mm -hmm. Muscadine wine. No. <laughs> And then I mix a lighter version of it, which I'm going to use on my second coat. And for that, I added in a little bit of tea rose with those two. So my three colors are muscadine, aubergine, tea rose. And just to let you know, yeah. June has named your color fireball. <laughs> Thank you for that, fireball June. We'll call you fireball June after my custom color mix, of course. Wink, wink. 
So I'm going to hit this now with my heat gun because it's not as dry as I had hoped it would be after me yapping for that much time. So let's dry my paint a little bit. Okay, I'm assuming you guys can hear me. I'm gonna talk loud. But I'm gonna talk to you guys about drying paint with a heat gun. Number one, you wanna keep your heat gun moving because it will bubble your paint. So keep it moving. Don't concentrate it in one spot. Number two, I'm looking more for airflow than heat. Some heat guns get really, really, really hot. In fact, I've got one. And it will, it will bubble your paint faster if you've got too much heat. So go more for the airflow. Um, a hair dryer works great as well. So question of the hour is, what's your gift to Sheila? Did you get it? Or did June hold out on you? I sent Sheila home a gift. From Which the was? Bow tour. What's Sheila's favorite thing? That's what I kind of figured. <laughs> Good job. Sheila has the one and only signed bottle Wait for it. of huh? Quick and Thick signed by Brush by Brandy. Sheila, if you use that, I'm going to be pretty offended. I want to see it on a shelf in your living room. In a case. In a case, a glass case with a plaque of quick and thick adhesive and sent it home for Sheila because she couldn't be at the Bells and Bow Tour. So another thing, where did you get this uh, fancy uh, stool you're running around on? <laughs> okay, you see this stool here? This is what my stool looked like before it broke. And then it broke, and so Sean took the post out, everything from here to here, and it's just the seat sat on the base. It is a broken mechanic stool, but it works awesome. And people have told me I should start manufacturing them, so apparently I need to find, like, I don't know, I need to go on Shark Tank. Good luck go with that. Shark Tank, yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, Sheila's gonna send you pics of its travels. That would be cool. She takes it everywhere and takes <laughs> selfies with it. That sounds, huh? that sounds exciting. You're not going to get committed. <laughs> so now what I want to do, I'm going to be a little bit rough on this paint, which is why I'm being so cautious about it being dry, because I'm going to come in here and I'm basically going to swirl in other colors on top of this. And I'm going to create kind of this moody, dry brushed, um, blended look. I'm going to use my custom color mixes, but I'm also going to use the colors straight up themselves. And like I said, they'll all tie in because they're in this mix. And the only other color I'm going to add in a little bit of, I think, is Midnight Sky. I use Midnight Sky a lot for shading, and that's what I want. I want to use it to darken up some areas. You okay, little? My five-year-old's been homesick from school for a few days now, guys. He's not doing very well. So what I really like for this, these are the Dixie Belle French tip brushes. And I like them because they're a natural bristle. So when I when I swirl in these other colors here, it's going to give me really nice, moody texture. But even um, if you can see through my swirls when I do it, you'll just see this base color underneath. You know, and with all the response in reference to signed bottles, I'm thinking I'm just going to copy bottles. your signature and just, you know, oh, go to town and oh, start sending bottles. start signing bottles of Quick and Thick and sending them out to everybody? So this is all I'm doing. I'm using one brush and I'm just going to kind of alternate between some of these colors. I'm alternating on the darker colors, but when it comes to putting the lighter ones in, I'll go ahead and use a different brush. So, so far I've got the, the Midnight Sky, the Muscadine Wine, the Aubergine. My brush is totally dry and I'm just swirling them in together. And then you'll be able to start seeing the layers where some of these colors come together. 
Okay, let's put some of the lighter color in. So I'm just gonna tip the brush in a little bit of my lighter color and work that in. So see how hard I'm working my base coat of paint? This is why um, I can add a little bit of water, but I don't want a lot of water. I just don't want this paint to set up, but I still want to get this. Yeah, see, I'm starting to pull a little bit of my base color here. Can you see that? That's just, I've overworked that spot. So because my paint is so new, I should wait overnight and let this dry and then come back and do this because I don't want to pull that base color. Oh, Dana says you uh, could pull some brush by Brandy Swag. Quick and thick t-shirts and hoodies. I know. You know, I um, I have a t-shirt designed. <laughs> so it's like, okay, what is this quick and thick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you guys talking about? Quick and thick is an adhesive that I like to use to attach my molds with. It's type one quick and thick. But mostly we just like saying quick and thick here on my, sh my on Brush by Brandy's show Thursday night. So ignore this spot right here. I'm gonna have to come back and fix it because I pulled my base coat. So that's just because I'm working on, you guys saw me dry it a few minutes ago. My paint's not dry enough. Because I could do this on dry paint all day long and never pull my base coat. But I kind of want to get this like more moody, stormy, What's that brush look? that you're using? This is the Dixie Belle French tip brush. Jizz. These are awesome. They were out of stock for a little bit, but I think they're back. They're back. You know what this reminds me of? This look reminds me of? Okay. Um, you know when you used to go get your pictures taken at JCPenney, like your mom would make you dress up in your Sunday best and go to JCPenney? And they pull down that backdrop oh, and it had gosh. like, you know, it had all the colors kind of swirled in there. That's what this kind of reminds me of. So your custom color was aubergine muscadine. Muscadine, aubergine muscadine. Wine, uh-huh. And then I did a lighter version of it, which here I'm going to throw a little bit of it in this drawer center right here. Bam. That I added a little bit of tea rose and it just created this kind of mauve color. I'm nervous to work this paint as much as I really want to because I'm gonna, I, my paint underneath is so new. And this is such an aggressive technique on the paint underneath that I really need my paint to be nice and dry. But I like this drawer right here, how it's a little bit darker around the edges. And I can even darken it still. So I only am using two brushes. I'm basically using one for my darker colors. And then I've got another one that I pulled out for the lighter colors in the middle. But in the end, you'll be able to see, like I've got a little bit of muscadine wine here. I've got some of the midnight sky here, the aubergine. And then I can see also the custom color mix that's underneath it. See if I can play with this a little bit more. Oh. Oh, Sheila. Oh. There was a song about that. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I digress. What, uh, what's this over here? Oh. oh, you guys actually can see that now. So you can pull that up. You guys want to talk about this piece? Apparently, well, Sheila does. <laughs> Because I'm going to get off any, um, pretty soon anyway. So this is another one of the new redesign with Prima transfers. And this is the piece that I kept hidden for like a month now. Um, but wow, that's not really a big reveal. Like, bam! Or, know. you know, any of that? No? no, no sound effects. Not a one. What is so cool about this piece is this transfer, you guys, only runs right Front edge of those. down the center. So from the inside point of the hardware is about where my transfer ends. Everything else I painted in Bob Ross. Bob Ross. I Bob Ross the sides to match the water scene. So, Happy clouds. So you know, while this main portion here is the transfer, this is all painted in brush by brandy style. So the transfer didn't fit my piece, but I was able to make it look like it all blends. Right? 
So I'm pretty happy with it. I think it turned out okay. And I was a little bit nervous because I don't paint, you know. I could do that. Yeah, no problem. It but I basically had to get out all my Dixie Belle blues to blend in this ocean scene over here. And then it wraps the sides. No birds? No birds. I didn't yeah. do the birds. The birds are part of the transfer. But it looks like a, a full water scene now. So disappointed. So I'm going to keep going on this piece right here. I like how these two drawers are looking. But when we get done with it, you guys will be able to see how I got to the look that it's going to be when I'm done. So I think it's really cool. Anyway, I'm going to get going. Um, you guys, thank you for, for joining me live here. Um, I'll be live again next Thursday. Um, we'll do some painting together. You guys go follow my page at Brush by Brandy. I'm on Instagram, um, YouTube, Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. Um, if you guys want to order any of the products I used tonight, my affiliate link is above. I always appreciate um, purchases made through there. I'm rewarded by Dixie Bell with a small percentage. The costs are the same for you guys. You can also use that link to find a retailer near you if you guys want to go in and look at the colors and touch the paint and um, talk to someone about it. But check out that link and um, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Have a good night.